بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم آئی ایم محمد احسن اشرف فروم فیصل آباد کیمپس وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس ٹاپک اباؤٹ پولوشن اینڈ اٹس سورسز فرسٹلی وی ول ڈیفائن واٹ از دا پولوشن سو پولوشن کین بی ڈیفائنڈ ایز اینی ڈیٹریمنٹل چینج ان فزیکل کیمیکل اینڈ بایولوجیکل انوائرمنٹ آف ہیومن and the planet as a whole any type of change which is harmful for the survival of the human being and any life form on this planet that is a pollutant and the mechanism of its generation is the pollution so it is undesired changes in the ecosystem which disturbs the normal functioning and the life of different organisms on the planet including human being so next definition is about the pollutant pollutants are the contaminants that get introduced into the natural environment beyond permitted limits and cause deleterious effects to the inhabitants in a visible way so the products which cause pollution are the pollutants and these pollutants are actually the contaminants which uh, cross their permissible limits they become uh, higher as their permissible limits and these pollutants disturb the quality of life on the earth they causes different damaging and deleterious effects which uh, can be easily visible uh, to every organism a pollutant is a constituent which is in wrong amount at a wrong place at a wrong time so for a pollutant these things can be considered that a chemical or a substance which is in a wrong amount at a wrong place at a wrong time for example nitrogen and phosphorus both these are essential nutrients for the plants nitrogen and phosphorus these are required for the normal metabolism of the plants uh, their uh, quantities if not available to the plants the normal growth cannot start or the plants can die uh, or their productivity can be reduced to very small quantities which can also disturb the food chain so their availability is necessary for living organisms but when they are in uh, the soil they are beneficial but once they are uh, by different mechanisms like runoff of water uh, from the rain or the during the uh, watering of the crops they when moves to the water bodies because in the water bodies they are not required in higher concentration they cause eutrophication because eutrophication is the increase in amount of nutrients in water bodies so at the croplands or in the fields they are necessary for the growth of the plant but once they are at a wrong place in a wrong amount at a wrong time they cause pollutant effects so nitrogen and phosphorus they are not pollutants in uh, uh, terrestrial land but they are uh, uh, they can act as a pollutant in the water bodies because they causes eutrophication and eutrophication uh, generates different secondary effects including the biological oxygen demand and different type of the uh, factors algal blooms that can disturb the water quality as well as the life in the water bodies types of pollutants types of the pollutants on the basis of their generation if they are comes from the nature they are called as the natural pollutants and if they are from the human activity they can be synthetic man made anthropogenic or xenobiotic pollutants all these names can be used for the man made pollutants the natural pollutants are 
द प्लूटेंट्स विच आर क्रिएटेड बाई सब्सटांसिस ऑफ नेचुरल ओरिजन दीज इंक्लूड वोल्कैनिक डस्ट द डस्ट जनरेटेड ड्यूरिंग द वोल्कैनिक इरप्शन और वेल वोल्कैनिज्म देन द सी साल्ट पार्टिकल्स दीज पार्टिकल्स कैन कम विद अलोंग विद द फ्यूम्स और विद द वाटर करंट्स देन फोटो केमिकली फॉर्म्ड ओजोन ozone which can be formed at the ground level by the process of photochemical oxidation and then products of forest fires in the forest there are different type of fires these fires generate carbon monoxide carbon dioxide as well as different type of gaseous pollutants and heat uh, pollution or thermal pollution as well synthetic man made anthropogenic or xenobiotic pollutants these are pollutants which are generated by the mechanism of urbanization uh, as well as the industrial growth in industrial growth there are different type of industries which generates pollutants includes pesticides detergents pharmaceuticals cosmetic products organic acids aerosols and metals classification of pollutants uh, on the basis of their effects the pollutants are classified into two categories pollutants can be grouped into two categories on basis of source the first one is the primary pollutant and second one is the secondary pollutant a primary pollutant is defined as a pollutant in Uh, air which is emitted directly from a source a pollutant which is a pollutant when it produced it is a primary pollutant for example the carbon monoxide or uh, for example sulfur dioxide these are directly emitted uh, as in their original form and in their this form they cause pollution so a pollutant which can cause pollution in its form uh, or in the form uh, at which it is generated a prime it is called as a primary pollutant uh, while a secondary pollutant is not directly emitted as such but forms when other pollutants called primary pollutants react in the atmosphere so secondary pollutants are those pollutants which are formed by combination of Uh, two or more primary pollutants they are not pollutant in their uh, first form in which they are generated but they cause pollution when two or more primary pollutants combine together for example the acid rain examples of secondary pollutants they include ozone nitrogen dioxide and acid rain ozone it is a secondary pollutant which is formed by combination of hydrocarbons and nitrogen oxides which is called as the noxies uh, they are combined in the presence of sunlight similarly nitrogen dioxide it is also a secondary pollutant it is formed when nitric oxide combine with oxygen in the air and acid rain it is formed by combination of sulfur dioxide or nitrogen oxides with water so these are the second examples of different secondary pollutants in this diagram there are different type of pollutants are also shown the primary pollutants which are directly emitted from the exhaust of the vehicle or exhaust from the industries these includes the sulfur dioxide carbon monoxide carbon dioxide nitric oxide nitrogen dioxide most hydrocarbons and most of the suspended particle these are the anthropogenic or man made sources and here is the volcanic eruption it also contribute to different primary pollutants but when these primary pollutants react together in the presence of the sunlight or in the presence of the water in the form of rain then these converted into some other pollutants which are called as the secondary pollutants in the secondary pollutants 
uh, SO3, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, which act as acid rain, hydrogen peroxide, ozone, peroxyacetyl nitrates, different salts, SO4, sulfates, nitrates. These are among the category of the different secondary pollutants. Our next category is the air pollutants, their sources and the effects caused by these pollutants. The first one air pollutant is the sulfur dioxide which is abbreviated as SO2. The sources of this pollutant are among natural sources, biological decomposition of the dead and decaying material and volcanic eruption they are the major natural sources for sulfur dioxide among artificial sources include smelting of sulfide containing ores combustion of sulfur containing fuels and petroleum refining these are the different artificial sources for generation of sulfur dioxide uh, once we are going to uh, smelt which is the breakdown of the ore during that process sulfur dioxide can be emitted or the uh, products containing sulfur or the fuels containing sulfur like coal coal contains a considerable considerable amount of sulfur uh, that comes up uh, the combustion of that coal generates sulfur dioxide as well as sulfur dioxide is also generated during the refining of petroleum uh, here in this chart different sources are uh, shown along with their percentages how much they contributed in the production of sulfur dioxide for example the non ferrous metals they contribute about 48.3% of SO2 pollutants transportation contributes 7.6% the other unknown sources for the SO2 are the 4.1% pulp and paper industry it generates 7.3% of the pollution of SO2 petroleum refining it generates 5.2% aluminium smelters they uh, generate 13.6% of SO2 and some other industries they generate 13.9% of this SO2. Negative impacts on plants. Uh, in the lower quantities the sulfur is uh, not very much dangerous but uh, a small in uh, a little bit increase in their quantities can damage the plants and other life form. For example SO2 in 0.3 ppm parts per million it can damage the plants for example lichens they are particularly sensitive to sulfur dioxide uh, sulfur dioxide suppresses overall vegetative and reproductive growth and yield in the plants so it reduces the growth of the plants and which leads to their reduced production which is the yield yield means the uh, uh, final crop or the final uh, body weight or biomass obtained from the plants uh, is their yield high atmospheric concentrations it cause injuries to leaves such as intervenal and blade damage necrosis of leaves and cellular collapse at higher concentration sulfur dioxide it damages more to the plant at moderate sulfur dioxide pollution it causes chlorosis of leaves without cellular collapse uh, so sulfur dioxide have negative impacts at all concentrations at lower concentrations moderate as well as at high uh, as the concentration of sulfur dioxide increases its impact on the plant also enhanced health effects in human due to sulfur dioxide sulfur dioxide causes eye irritation particularly at the time of formation of smog one type of smog contain sulfur dioxide and that causes eye irritation then the chest constriction that is difficult in breathing the there is a tightness of the chest can be feel by the organisms which are exposed to sulfur dioxide headache vomiting 
death from respiratory ailment paralyzes or destroys bronchial cilia in air passage of man it also constricts bronchi means the bronchial diameter reduced their uh, lumen size is reduced which reduces the uh, exchange of gases in the environment and the lungs then it also damages the lungs it lowers resistance to pneumonia and influenza it causes bronchitis which is the damaging of the bronchi and bronchiole it also called causes emphysema which is the reduction in surface area for gaseous exchange at alveolar level and it also causes irritation of the mucous membranes that is an increase in cough and sputum SO2 reacts with moisture to form sulfuric acid H2SO4 and sulfuric acid causes respiratory diseases and acid rain falls that acid rain can reduces forest growth increased leaching from agricultural soil means it leads to the removal of the important minerals in the soil which is called as the leaching so leaching can be enhanced by the acid rain then erosion of building materials stone cancer and damage to the water bodies it reduces the ph of the water bodies which in return causes damage to the inhabitants of that water bodies the second pollutant is carbon monoxide the sources for carbon monoxide include gasoline engines burning of coal in the defective furnaces exhaust from automobiles and incomplete combustion because once the incomplete combustion takes place it will definitely generate carbon monoxide because when there is a combustion in limited supply of oxygen it always generate carbon monoxide because if the fuel is fully combusted it converted into carbon dioxide and fully combustion means full oxidation if there is incomplete oxidation during the combustion it will definitely generate carbon monoxide health impacts in human the carbon monoxide causes headache dizziness nausea running uh, ringing in the ears heart palpitation pressure in chest and difficulty in breathing further health impacts in human includes when carbon monoxide combined with hemoglobin of blood it forms carboxyhemoglobin and this carboxyhemoglobin reduces the capability of hemoglobin to carry oxygen it uh, reduces oxygen uh, carrying capacity of the blood which in return causes different Uh, tissue damages and respiratory illness it also called as the asphyxia this is again the uh, less ability to carry the oxygen blood to clot and block the coronary arteries and it increases the rate of fatty materials deposition in the arteries here in this picture different sources of carbon monoxide is shown in the carbon monoxide there the transportation contributes maximum to its generation that is about 75.7% then residen residential wood burning 10.6% other sources are 0.2% aluminum smelters contribute 9.1% pulp and paper industry contribute 2% and other industries contribute about 2.4% because in the transportation there is incomplete combustion takes place so maximum generation of carbon monoxide is from the exhaust comes out from the transportation these are different uh, references for uh, this uh, uh, lecture so all about about uh, the basic types of the pollutants and here we discuss only two categories of uh, air pollutants 
the next pollutants we will discuss in the upcoming lecture thank you allah hafiz